What's going on, guys? Today we're here with Ainsley the Hero. We're here today in his uh, apartment, lovely apartment in Dubai Marina. How's it going, brother? Very well, thank you. How you doing? Good, good. Yeah. So tell us a bit about how your journey began and how old were you? Um, I left the UK uh, yeah. when I was 16 years of age. Uh, I got a job working in Tenerife. Um, my friend, uh, who's still my best friend to this day, Mark Murphy, uh, he actually um, went on the train to the airport, Heathrow Airport with me. Uh, and uh, he gave me his last 50 pounds at the airport uh, at Gatwick. And then he, that was the last money that he had. And he jumped the train home yeah. again. And when he gave it to me, he said, you're going to need this money a lot more than me. You're going off to start a new life in Spain. Uh, so this is the last 50 pounds. And he took that, he gave that to me. And that was all the money I had. So that's how the journey, that's how it began anyway. No way. How did that feel, him giving his last amount of money? I mean, I needed it because yeah. I didn't have any money myself at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I really appreciated him giving it to me. But um, but yeah, of course, it was, a, it was an act of sacrifice for himself because obviously that, that was always his last money as well. Hence the reason he had to jump the train yeah, uh, to, yeah. get, to get back home to Essex. So when did you get into business? Uh, I mean, I've, I mean, I've always been into business. Uh, yeah. I mean, even from a young age, uh, my auntie always reminds me there was one time when I, I, I resold, I resold her a newspaper. I had the newspaper, and she wanted to, she wanted to read it, uh, and I offered it to her for half the price because I'd, I'd read it already. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been into business and, and looking to, to kind of like do entrepreneurial things and, and uh, cleaning cars and all of that from a, from a much younger age. Yeah. So, what age did you start your uh, business that you have now, off market listing properties? Um, okay, so off market. So the property journey uh, has been ongoing for a long time. I've been living in the UAE now for mm. over fifteen years, mm. uh, and I've always been into property in some aspect, in some way. Uh, off market listing Dubai dot com has been more recent, mm. uh, and this is because I felt there's a need for many people that are looking for properties in Dubai or looking to sell properties in Dubai that didn't want to sell it uh, during the traditional methods that are currently available, such as the, the websites and the portals. I heard you've worked in other places as well, like New York and stuff like that. So how, how was that experience like? Uh, New York was interesting. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was actually working in the UK. Uh, before, let, let, me, let me go back a little bit before that, right? Okay. So I was working in the UK uh, and I was working for um, a call centre. Okay. Uh, and I was one of the managers there at the call center and it was doing very, very well. Yeah. Uh, but there was a bonus that was supposed to be paid to me by my manager, okay. uh, but he didn't want to pay the bonus to me. Yeah. So I got a little bit upset about that. Um, and I thought to myself, well, you know, if you're not going to pay me what you've promised me, mm. then this is clearly is not somewhere where I, where I really should you know, continue to work. Yeah. So I, um, I applied for a job. Uh, I spoke to a recruiter that I had that I'd worked with before. And I said, listen, I'm looking for a job anywhere in the world. Uh, just find me something, let me know what you've got. He called me back about three, four days later. He said, Ainsley, I've got a job for you or I've got a potential job for you in New York. I was like, great, brilliant. What do I do next? He said, first of all, they want to have uh, an interview with you, a telephone interview with you um, so you can speak with them. I said, line it up. We had the telephone interview with the, uh, the HR lady. Uh, she then put me on to the sales manager who then put me on to the CEO. So I had like three or four of them on the phone. I was speaking to them for about an hour and a half on the phone. So I knew clearly things were looking like they were looking quite positive. Yeah. And they said to me, we would like to see you. This was like on a Thursday. They said, we'd like to see you next week, Wednesday. Um, so we can have another ch chat with you, a second round of interviews, basically. Yeah. One, so you can see how, how we are, but also so we can kind of get a feel for how you are. Mm. I said, yeah, no problem at all. They said, next week, Wednesday, 2 p.m. I was like, great. So I finished the call with them. Uh, I immediately went online, booked a flight, and uh, direct to New York. I, I booked a flight for the that the interview was like yeah the interview was like Tuesday Wednesday. Booked yeah. a flight, landed in New York on the Monday. Got got myself ready, got my suit ready, and then I walked into their office at two p.m. I uh, said hi, I'm Ainsley. I'm here for the interview. And yeah. the, the receptionist <laughs> looked at me and she said uh, she said oh, we don't have anybody for an interview. I said please just check. There's an interview yeah. for Ainsley. Then she looked at chest. You know, it was a telephone interview, don't you? I said, yeah, I know, but I thought I'd come in person. Oh. So, so that was uh, that was how the New York journey started. So was it, you were like quite confident? Well, I mean, it was true. What they had mm. said on the phone was correct. I wanted to see how they were mm. uh, and they wanted to see how I was. And I thought there's no better way for me to get an understanding and a feel for how they are yeah. than actually going to the interview and actually, you know, going to New York. And, uh, but I was quite confident because I've been on the phone with them for quite a while already. So I, I got a feel for them then. So yeah, I thought uh, I thought yeah, go take the next step. Nice. So after after New York, was it straight into Dubai or? Uh, yeah, so I was working in New York for a little while, uh, and then I always, I always had my eyes set on Dubai. Mm. I'd seen a Discovery Channel documentary okay. uh, many 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 moons ago about how they made the Burj Al Arab. 
Okay, okay. And I remember watching that and seeing that and, and seeing the vision that the leaders of the United Arab Emirates had. And I said to myself, do you know what? One day I want to go and live and I want to work in Dubai because that I can see that's a place that's aspirational. And yeah. these guys have kind of got the same kind of vision yeah. as to what I've got. And then nothing's impossible. So that was that was how that came about. And, uh, and after New York, yeah, I was definitely looking for an opportunity in Dubai. Definitely. So yeah, explain, so what is off-market listing for the viewers that don't know? And what are the benefits of your service? So, I mean, in a nutshell... Um, we enable people. I mean, let me give you a, let me give you a story of a of a potential client of mine yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was actually at a barbecue, funnily enough, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it was actually a friend's barbecue. Uh, and he uh, he said to me, he's got a beautiful house, really really nice house. He's renovated it, spent a lot of money on it, mm -hmm. and he's really really proud of it. He put a swimming pool in there, and it was it was beautiful. Um, and he said that he was looking to sell the property, so he was you know put it on the usual listing portals, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then the agent called him up and said, uh, we've got somebody to look into you know, view your property. It's like, fine, bring them round. They came round and it happened to be his next door neighbor with her best girlfriend that came round with their camera phone in hand, videoing the whole entire property. And what they really were doing, they were the, the neighbor, they were nosy. They wanted to see what was going on next door. Yeah. They wanted to video it. They wanted to snoop and have a little look round with no intention of buying it at all. But what they really wanted to do was get all the details down, yeah. take it yeah. back to their husband so they could copy it and do it in their own villa as well. So, so after the, the, that viewing had finished, he said he felt so demoralized and he felt so bad and he actually said he felt violated mm. because somebody had come around, you know, done all of that, snooped around, gone around in his bedroom and looked at everywhere yeah. with no intention of buying the, pro the, pro the property. So just to look at the like, interior and stuff like that? Just to look at the interior to see yeah. how everything has been done, to, you know. And he said, like, you know what? I'm, I'm taking it off. I don't want to have it listed anymore. I, I, you know, I only want people to see it. They genuinely want to be able to buy it. Private. Yeah. Private. private. Yeah. Uh, and I understood that. And I got that. But I felt that as well because I could see that it really hurt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it probably hurt me as well because yeah. I wouldn't, you know, like someone's just come with no intention to buy it, just a snoop. So yeah, so off-market listing is to appeal to sellers that value privacy, that want to sell their property, but they want to be able to sell it to people that actually want to buy it and not people that just want to have a little look around it. So what are the benefits? The, I mean, the benefits is privacy. Yeah. Uh, the benefits is the fact, I mean, on both sides. Some, um, that, that's obviously from the seller's side, but some buyers also, they're looking for properties that may not be able to be found on the traditional portals because many, especially the more high value properties, yeah. they're not listed uh, on, on, on all the property portal sites. So sometimes they prefer to list it with, um, with uh, somebody that will kind of can keep it, as, in other words, for it, it's a pocket listing. Mm. Uh, and then they're able to then look at the properties and and, and share it that way. So it's, nice. it's more more. It's, it, I think privacy is, is one of the main privacy, one, yeah. yeah one of the main key. Factors. What's the minimum yeah. um, amount that you sell the property for? I mean, so typically um, the minimum price that I sell uh, buy or sell property for typically is around the three point six five million dirham mark. Around about the million dollar mark yeah. is 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 where I'm at. Uh, one of the reasons for that as well is because many of the people that I actually sell properties to. Uh, are outside the country or they're keen to get a golden visa which enables them to be able to come reside in Dubai for the next 10 years uh, with their families as well so that I means you can do that when you buy a property uh, yeah. you know in that kind of range yeah I saw on Instagram you were um, you were shooting in Maldives you used you were selling someone's house using a footage from Maldives how was that experience like I don't think anyone's ever done that before so uh, that's an interesting one I was yeah. approached by somebody Mm. Uh, they came to me and they said, uh, I've got these two uh, villas yeah. that I'm interested in selling. Um, you can sell them, you can market them exclusively, but you're not allowed to show any videos of the property and you're not allowed to show any photos of the property. How are you going to sell it then? Uh, so that, I mean, that, that, would <laughs> normally, that, would, that would normally stump most, uh, most, most realtors. And yeah. that, you know, some of them would, would struggle with that and say, well, how can I do that if I'm not able to, to show photos, I'm not able to show videos. Mm. So I said to him, okay, no problem at all. Tell me a little bit about the property. He told me about the property. He told me about some of the features of the property. And I was like, as he was talking, I was thinking, I was like, I know exactly how I'm going to market and how I'm going to sell this, uh, this property. So, um, so, um, so I confirmed with him some of the things that I had in mind, uh, such as the fact that the, the, both the villas had swimming pools mm -hmm. with crystal clear waters. Yeah. Both of the villas had coconut palm trees. Yeah. Uh, both of the villas had spas inside the villa. Mm -hmm. um, and they also had um, rainfall type showers. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to do, I put all of that together. I thought, where in the world has got all of that to a high level uh, and has got the crystal clear waters? And I knew the Maldives had all of that. So I flew to the Maldives, 
shot the video, uh, edited it, put it all together, and went back and took it to uh, took it to the took it to the seller and said, "I know exactly how I'm going to market this for you. I know exactly how we're going to do it." And that, that's why we went. So I went to the Maldives in order yeah. to sell a villa in du- two villas in Dubai. No way! How did you come up with that idea? Like that's quite creative. I mean, I, I wanted to be outside the box. Yeah, I believe if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've already got. So I knew I had to do something different. Um, the, the, the 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 villas themselves were sizable. One yeah. of the villas had an eighteen car garage. Eighteen car. Eighteen car garage. A super rich, yeah. Billionaires. So, so, Crazy. and when I when I went to look at the villa myself, I saw not only did I see the eighteen car garage, <laughs> I saw every every parking space filled oh, uh, wow. as well. So you can that kind of gives you an indication uh, as to the level of uh, of villa that it was yeah. and why it was worth to me to go the extra mile in order to go and sell it because obviously you know it works out you know pretty. Pretty lucrative um, being able to sell those properties as well. Yeah, how, how many have you sold since uh, like marketing? Uh, I mean, so no, these two I yeah. currently have. I've got some offers uh, on 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 the smaller one. There's a smaller one and there's a larger one. Mm-hmm. Uh, one sixty million dirhams. The other one's one hundred and fifty million dirhams. Um, so, um, but we're we're confident that we'll 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 get these ones sold. And but we 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 constantly sell. I mean, we constantly sell so. typically seven to eight properties a month. Yeah. Well, when did you buy your first like one in Dubai? Very soon after I arrived back here, I yeah. spent a little bit of time uh, in uh, Nairobi, in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, we had a hotel over there. Uh, and then what actually happened there was I was relocating back to Dubai with my family and I needed somewhere to live. Yeah. Uh, so I purchased from Nairobi uh, an off-plan property here in Dubai okay. uh, in an area called Jumeirah Park. So I brought that... Um, there for 2.6 million dirhams um, off plan. So, but yeah. when we arrived here, it was just about to be nearly finished. Uh, what actually happened was quite interesting. We didn't end up living in that property because the family, the, my family that was moving over, I wanted to have them closer uh, to the schools and the nursery. And I had my young daughter as well. Yeah. So I actually ended up moving into a property on the palm and I actually ended up uh, short term renting or corporate renting the property that I just brought that had just been finished and just just uh, just been built. So that's an interesting story. And that's what got me into the short-term rental market yeah. uh, by doing it myself, uh, learning about it, and then being happy to kind of like educate and like teach others how to be able to do uh, the corporate let, which is very different to Airbnb. Okay. What about your first ever property? Was that in the UK? Uh, that was in Spain. That was in, in Spain, Canary okay. Islands. I was uh, 23 and I bought a townhouse uh, there. That was after, do you remember when, I, when Mark gave me the 50 pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, about five years later, I bought okay. my first property over there. Uh, I was working in, in, in Spain uh, for some time, yeah. Nice, nice. So you were the CEO of Groupon. How did you land that role? That's like a big company. <laughs> <laughs> so, so correction, I was the CEO for Groupon Middle East. Middle East, yeah. Uh, Groupon is a very big company, but I wasn't, I wasn't CEO of Groupon Global. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was CEO of Groupon Middle East. That was quite interesting. So what actually happened there... Uh, it was at a time when my friend and I were both looking for roles. We were both looking for jobs. Um, there was the financial crisis had just recently taken place. So things were a little bit here, there and everywhere. So we thought to ourselves, how can we get a job uh, in a very competitive market when not many places are actually hiring? Yeah. So what uh, we creatively came up with um, was we, uh, we called the, the group on. It was when they had just first uh, arrived in the country. Yeah. Uh, and we knew a little bit about recruitment and we were thinking about getting to recruitment ourselves and that kind of thing as, uh, as well and, and placing people. So what we thought is we'd call them up and we said to um, the guys over at Groupon, um, listen, uh, we are a new recruitment company uh, that's just starting up. We are looking to place um, really good candidates. We are so confident that the quality of candidates that you can get from us is better than anywhere else. We will give you two candidates uh, uh, and if you completely free of charge. Uh, if you're not happy with them, you don't have to pay us anything at all. And if you are happy with them, then obviously you can carry on and you can take more take more from them. They said, if we can have two candidates completely free of charge, we're more than happy to trial, trial that because nobody else is offering those terms. Yeah. Um, when, can, when can they start? We said, no, they'll be with you Monday morning. <laughs> and my friend and I rocked up and we started work. Um, that was just a, as a junior level. Yeah. And then once I was inside the company, once we were both inside the company, then I was able to progress and work my way up. And then eventually I then became the CEO. So you started basically from the... I started from the bottom. From the bottom, yeah. 
again and you built your way up. Yeah, correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Property is a big thing in Dubai. I think I heard you also ran Property Finder as well. Uh, so I was the international business director for Property Finder. Mm. Um, so what that means is I was the guy, the boots on the ground that would fly to the different countries. So we, yeah. I opened six countries, Qatar, Lebanon, Egypt, six Morocco, countries. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Uh, so it was my job to find the CEO for the country or the country manager. Uh, and then kind of help him build up and then kind of get all those countries off the ground and, and get those uh, those, uh, those uh, countries up and running. Did you face any challenges while doing that? Yeah, we faced quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> uh, startups are always challenging. Uh, yeah. They're always tough. Um, we faced quite a few. Uh, example, uh, when we were in Saudi Arabia and Egypt, I remember. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, these guys would, had been used to using newspapers uh, if they were advanced uh, for marketing. And if not, it was normally a guy that was sat outside the apartment that would know all the properties that are empty. So oh, that yeah. would be the person that would be, who, who would, you'd walk up to him, you'd say, what apartments are empty? And yeah, that's, yeah. that's traditionally how it was done in Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So when we went to them, we said, listen, we're going to be able to help market for you using online uh, means and online methods. They're all like, listen, I don't know who you think you are. <laughs> yeah. Coming over here with your shiny shoes, yeah, yeah. thinking you're going to change things for us. This, this isn't going to work. Uh, you know, we've been doing it for 50 years. My dad did it before me. My uncle did it before me. Yeah, yeah. You, there's nothing new that you're going to show us. So we're like, okay, cool. No problem. We understand. It was like an education process to be able to educate them as to doing things differently, yeah. which is always quite a, quite a challenge. Um, so um, we said, no problem. We'll do everything um, because we had a bit. Like, we had another challenge with taking photographs. They didn't want us to take photographs in, in inside the bedrooms of, of some of those, the properties they wanted to sell. Yeah. So we said no problem. Just tell us which telephone number uh, do you want us to send the leads to, the calls to. Mm. So they te- they give the telephone. Well, I'll, I'll take them. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just give me the keys for the property. Let me go. I'll take all the photos. I'll do everything, and then I'll just send the leads through to you. So they gave us the number. Uh, I'd go in. I'd take all the photos. Pho- I'd ask them first. We'll take the photographs. They weren't yeah. interested. They didn't want to do it. They had yeah. no value in it whatsoever. They're like, no. <laughs> um, so we did it. Yeah. Then the calls started coming. When the calls started coming, they then came back to us and said, "Hey, listen, we've got two more properties uh, that we want to add to this list. Yeah. Can you go and do them as well?" And then I said, "I can go and do it, but I'm now charging for the photos." Yeah. And they're like, "Don't worry, we'll do the photos ourselves and we'll send them to you." Yeah. I was like, "That's exactly where I wanted you." Uh, and then they'd start sending the photos, and then they'd start right now. We're charging for the listing. Then they're like, "No, no, no it's okay. We'll do the listing ourselves. We've seen how you've done it." Yeah. And then they started learning how to do it for themselves. And then before you know it. Um, they, they were up, they were taking the photographs, they were listing the properties, they were sending all the details through yeah. uh, and sending it through to their phone. Uh, and yeah, and we, we got that up and running. But it was a challenge to start with, but we, we, fortunately we, we, we got there. Yeah, so what are you up to now in Dubai like with business compared to life in New York and UK? Uh, yeah, and Spain, I guess. Um, so really, uh, now it's spending as much time as possible I can with my family. That's yeah. really, really important. That's that's number one. That's one of the other reasons why I kind of um, gave up the corporate um, race of, of, of the nine to five and now doing the real estate. Yeah. Uh, and kind of, yeah, just in, just, just enjoy spending time. Traveling is also really, really important as well. So obviously when I'm going to different locations to, to film for uh, for something to do with property, then obviously yeah. I'm also able to t- take the family and have some have some quality time with those guys as well. So that's the main focus. Work, keep having a healthy balance of, of work but also family. Yeah, how many offices yeah. do you have in Dubai? So we currently have one office at the moment in Dubai, yeah. um, but I, a lot has changed since the pandemic, as I'm sure it's changed everywhere around the world. Mm. Um, it's not so much about offices, uh, having offices and having locations. Is your business like automated? Well, it's not so much it's automated. It's more, we're mobile, we're on the road. Mobile, yeah. So we have like a people carrier that we use, um, you know, for the VIP clients to move them around and that kind of to do the tours. Uh, and now what we do, we, we you know, we, we spend time on the road, going, speaking to clients, looking at properties, viewing, getting the real it's feel all for on it. your feet. Yeah, like yeah. So, so instead of it being office space, of course, yeah. you know, I, I have my team that's, that, that's based, you know, in the office. But, um, but you know, traditionally I'm out and about meeting people, speaking to people yeah. and kind of um, the, the property business is really a people business. If you're good mm-hmm. with people, then, you know, you've got the potential to be really good in property. Yeah. What, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to start up in properties? What I would say is um, there's no such thing as easy money, um, really. Um, with, no matter what you do, you've always got to work. You've always got to give some effort. You've always got to put some some legroom, you know, some, some effort into it. Um, but what I would say is, you know, be true to yourself, work hard, mm. uh, give it everything you've got, be transparent. And I think if you wear your heart on your sleeve, people will eventually will see that. They'll respect that. And I think they'd much rather work with somebody who they know is going to be transparent with somebody. Many times I'll tell somebody, I'm going to tell you something now. You might not, it's not, might not be what you want to hear, 
but it's the truth. I'm going to tell it to you anyway. And ultimately, they respect that. And they say, listen, we really appreciate that, Ainsley. You know, sometimes we're going to look at a, we're going to look at a property. I'm going to say, I'm going to show you this property. I don't think you're going to like it. And you're not going to like it for this reason, X, Y, and Z. Uh, instead of, which is the, the opposite, which is what most agents are trying to do. Okay. Oh, buy this because it's great here. <laughs> buy this because it's great here. I'm like, no. I'm like, don't buy this because of this. Don't buy this because of this. Because then what ends up happening invariably when I do then do say I found a property that I think you're going to like and they go and look at it they're like yeah this is one we're going to go and like and then traditionally they, you know typically it goes through so yeah. so I just say be, be be truthful and be be transparent nice yeah how much was the most expensive property you sold the most expensive property that we're going to sell is going to be this one which should be 150 million that's going to be that's going to be yeah, that's going to be the most expensive property and that's in uh, the, dirhams that's in dirhams 150 what? million dirhams yeah, 150 million dirhams. yeah. and uh, I've seen you offering like complimentary helicopter tours for your clients well, what's that all about so, so many of my clients live outside the country. Yeah. Um, they live internationally. Uh, many of them are cash rich, but time poor. Mm. Um, so they would like to purchase in a property in Dubai, but they may not necessarily know in which area that they'd like to be able to purchase the property. For those high net worth individuals um, that are looking to purchase, then what we're able to offer for those guys is a complimentary helicopter uh, trip um, for them to see the different areas of Dubai. So they can see the Palm, they can see the marina, they can see the Emirates Hills, we can show them around the different areas from the sky, mm. let them see it, let them understand how the different areas are, the different aspects of them. Once they see an area that they like, we can then take them down onto the ground, put them in the car, and then obviously show them around the, you know, the different properties that we've got around there as well. So it's kind yeah. of like uh, those people that have got limited time, you're only in Dubai for 12 hours or so, uh, but you know, you're, 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 you're definitely looking to, to purchase something, then that could be an easy way uh, to be able to do that. Yeah, are you charging for the tours or are they? So, so we'll take a small deposit yeah. uh, for the tours, um, but then when they purchase the property, that's just you know refunded back off off the back of the end of purchasing of the property. So yeah, we will. Okay. We, yes, yeah, so yeah, the answer is yes. We are charging, but if they put, if they ultimately end up purchasing, then it then it will actually be uh, be deducted. What about if someone? Free. Yeah, what about if someone just wants to go on the helicopter ride without just like just for an uh, excursion and for fun? Uh, there's plenty of companies that offer that as well. <laughs> yeah, right. There's plenty of companies that offer so, that. So as you, well. you don't offer that. You don't. I don't. No, no. We're not yeah. a helicopter tour company. <laughs> yeah. We we uh, we sell properties yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. we like to offer added value. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for our clients. Clients, the word clients, so that which means people that are obviously that are working with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we don't just offer, you know. Uh, but, but there's plenty of companies that can offer helicopter tours if someone wants to go up in a chopper for a little while. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, apart from uh, properties, do you do any other ventures? Um, tech. I, I like tech, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've been involved in um, some recruitment. Uh, there's, a, there's a new development that we came up with, which was um, recruitment um, like Tinder, uh, but video led. Okay. Uh, so it's a recruitment app that's video led, but it's like you swipe. So the candidate would uh, do a video, uh, the job hirer would do a 60 second video as well. I'm yeah. looking for X, Y, Z. Then the candidate then would reply back um, with their the own video. 60 second video. And then the job hirer can either swipe left or right, depending on whether they wanted to take them on. So that's one of the-, the, so one of the Is that something you created? That's a, I didn't create it, no. Okay. I, I can't take credit for that one. Somebody else oh. created it. They came to me and said, listen, I've got this idea. Yeah. Um, how, what's the best way to, you know, to scale it? I help people scale when they're looking to scale businesses and that kind of thing, So, I, which I enjoy. So it's like a passion project. Yeah, who's yeah. your target market? Um, so target market would be uh, anybody that's looking to purchase a property in Dubai um that's above you know 3.65 million dirhams so you're looking at billionaires millionaires uh, i'm looking at people that are looking to purchase a property that, <laughs> that's above that's above a million dollars, above a million dollars. Yeah. so as an entrepreneur what um popular entrepreneurial advice would you agree or disagree with this is a controversial one i've got i've got a controversial one for you <laughs> okay so i know that um that typically what many people including myself was told was you know work really really hard at school go to university you know yeah. you know do really well there and go on and do xyz and yeah. if you do all of that then you know that's almost you're almost guaranteed to land a great job and to be able to do really really well right yeah. that's that's what i've that I've, what I've been brought up to kind of uh to listen to. Uh, what I've found is is that's not necessarily the truth. Mm. I wouldn't say that it's that that that's the opposite. That it means that somebody is not to work hard at school. I do think I do think and advocate <laughs> that it's important yeah. to work hard at school. Um, but I would say that I feel that there are many different avenues in order to become successful, in order to be successful. And there's not only the traditional ones that we may once. I think the world's changed a lot yeah. recently, mm. and I think things are different. Um, now to how they were, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Things have changed a lot in that period of time. Uh, and I think I've, so that, I, that, that would be the, the controversial one that I'd say. I'd yeah. say work hard, 
uh, in whatever you do, whether it's at school or yeah. whether it's outside of that. Even if you work hard outside of that, you can still be very, very successful. And there's, there's quite a lot of good examples of that. Yeah. Of people that have gone on to do very, very well, that have worked hard outside of the, tradi- the traditional educational system. Yeah, so you're saying follow your passion? I'm 1 million percent saying follow your passion. Yeah. Along your journey, did you have any mentors? Do you know what? I haven't really had um, that many mentors. Yeah. But it is something that I'd advocate for and it is something that I'd say because had I had more mentors, I could have been able to progress even faster. So did you say you're self-taught? I'm I'm self-taught to a certain degree. I mean, I've lived in lots of different countries, Mm, um, you know, uh, worked in lots of different countries as well. So I have moved around quite a bit. Um, But yeah, I've been kind of self-taught. But I I would advise for others coming up. Um, to get a mentor because you get, and it's, but there's two things number one get a mentor number two listen to your mentor yeah. <laughs> because uh, by listening to the mentor that can actually help you and it can actually speed up your process I believe if I'd have had a mentor then you know yeah, I, I could have been you know a, a couple of steps ahead even, even, even faster have you had any like hard choices that you had to make to get to where you are today um, yeah, just a couple. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah a couple. Yeah. I mean, when I was in Spain, um, uh, when we very first started off, you know, when I first arrived there, uh, as I said, like, you know, I didn't have any money. Mm. Uh, so uh, I used to have a thing. What I did, I had, I got two pint glasses. Yeah. Uh, I always remember this from the, um, uh, from, from one of the pubs. And then what I did, I had the pint glasses. I, um, I, I could afford tea bags. Mm. So I, I, I used to hate going to bed on an empty stomach. Yeah. So what I'll do, Same. I'll put the tea bags <laughs> in the, in the pint glass. Yeah. I'd fill it up with boiling water. I'd add sugar to both of them, stir them, let it cool down. And then I'd neck the pints of, uh, of tea basically uh, before bed. So my stomach would feel really, really bloated and I'd go to bed and sleep. So I used yeah. to do that back in, I mean, this is many moons ago uh, now, but um, yeah. yeah, but that I, I believe <laughs> things, fortunately, things have, have, have improved a, a bit since then. Yeah. So you risked it all. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like advise other people to do that as well? Like risk it all, go all in? Uh, no. <laughs> no because it's a very high risk strategy and it, you know it can work but it cannot work and you couldn't leave yourself in a in a in a, in a, in a tight situation so yeah. i would so I, I would recommend others to try and see if you can get you know as much as you can put together so yeah. that you feel a little bit safer would definitely be the be the more the, the, the more intelligent choice yeah but i feel like also if you let's say you go all in something i feel like because you don't have a plan b plan a is like the only like it has to work out so you, you kind of you know strive more into Plan A, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. That's exactly where I was. I only had a plan. <laughs> yeah. I only had a plan. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I got myself out to Spain. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a way of getting myself back from Spain. And, yeah. uh, and I had the 50 pound that Mark gave me until I started earning some money. Yeah. So uh, I, I, plan A was the only plan. And there, there, was, a, there, was, a, there was no room for failure. <laughs> yeah, you had to make it work. It, it was a success mission only. There was, yeah. there, was, there was nothing. There was no coming back. I've seen an article on Daily Mail. You were featuring on Daily Mail. Uh, selling clothes in the school playground to moving abroad at 16. How, how did you feature on Daily Mail? Um, so, <laughs> that's another interesting one. Um, Were you actually selling clothes, yeah, in the school playground? So, well, you, I think you know how the press is, right? You can, yeah. never really, you can never really take all the things that the press say yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly for, verbatim, okay? So, uh, but what I, I'll go as far to say, when I was younger, uh, yeah, we did used to, um, me and two other friends, uh, Mark included, yeah. we, used to, we used to drive around to the different schools in the lunch hour and, uh, and sell clothes um, uh, to, the different, to the different schools during the <laughs> lunch hour, yeah, uh, until, until that got shut down very, very quickly. Yeah, so you've been, you've been so a businessman since day, since day one? Well, we, I mean, yeah, it's always been trying to just, you know, be an entrepreneur and find different ways, but I wouldn't recommend anybody else do that or, or yeah. do that. That didn't, end up, that didn't end up very well. And we ended okay. up getting all of our, uh, all of our stock confiscated. Yeah. So, um, yeah. what, what kind of clothes was it? Was it like designer or? <laughs> there, was, there, there was, yeah, there was, there, there was a, uh, yeah, I believe that there was some clothes there that, that, that we shouldn't have been selling. How did you get the mindset of creating a business idea? Like the one you're doing now? Seeing a need, yeah. seeing what's not there. And then coming up with something that will then fulfill that need. So when I heard my friend in the kitchen at the barbecue talking about the pain that he felt with putting his property, you know, in, in, in one place uh, and people come in. And I, I really felt the pain that he had. Uh, and I thought, OK, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an opportunity here yeah. to be able to take that away so people don't have to feel that pain anymore. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And then off market listing Dubai was born. Yeah, would you say that inspired you? Yeah, yeah, that that and you know a few other reasons as well. Uh, the fact that obviously it allows more time um, mm. to be able to you know you work on your own clock and you know it's not like it's a traditional nine to five. You might have to yeah, work yeah. weekends, but it also means that you can kind of be more flexible with your time. Yeah, so, yeah. boss. Yeah, yeah, be your own boss. Yeah, yeah. Boss. So how do you, obviously it must get like quite busy as well. You know, you've got you've got your property business. Um, you have a few other ventures. You said so. How do you like manage your like the work life balance? I think the most important thing is to have a great team. Hmm. So two things I'd say. One, have a great team. Two, focus on your strengths. Hmm. So if there's things or if there's aspects that you're not as good at, then I think it's important to make sure that you you realise that, you acknowledge that, and then you're able to put situations, positions, or people in place hmm. to help mitigate that and to help make that easier for you. I think that's something that's really, really important because I think um, if you can go 100% on the things you're really good at and then you're able to then, you know, give those other things that you're not so good at to other people yeah. or to other positions or, or to place it differently or to structure things differently, that can also help speed up your growth. Yeah. How do you handle the stress that comes with the responsibility? I've, I've Handling stress has always been something that I kind of got used to. Mm. Um um, traveling a lot is really good so, yeah. uh, I also enjoy uh, scuba diving yeah. uh, because your phone can't ring when you're under the water so that, that, yeah. that's also quite yeah, yeah. quite relaxing so um, yeah. yeah just trying to do things as much as possible to kind of like ease the stress and, and kind of enjoy yourself as yeah, best I, I, feel like, I feel like with, the, with this role you can kind of do like you can go on adventures stuff like that because you're always like moving about I've heard it I heard it someone say one time create a life that you don't need a holiday from you know do yeah. things that when it doesn't feel like work yeah. then it doesn't feel then it doesn't feel as stressful this really for me yes of course obviously I can earn money when we sell the properties and that kind of thing but it's not work I enjoy people yeah. I enjoy working with people I enjoy finding people their dream home yeah. you know I enjoy getting them in there you yeah. know I enjoy you know the challenges that comes with it and you know so it's not it's not yes it's work but it's not work work yeah, yeah. you're not <laughs> yeah. saying on a desk are you it's like no, practical work correct, correct. Yeah, it's like enjoyable but it's also helping people right so yeah. so and I that that's what resonates with me the most yeah like you're in the Maldives yeah. so it's not like your normal 9 to 5 in the office correct yeah, yeah. what have you learned from traveling the world what do you reckon you've learned along the way there's there's quite a lot to be learned from traveling the world i think uh people are the greatest asset mm. people are everything uh people, if yeah. you have good people it changes the game and uh, and if you're surrounded by good people you literally can do anything at all uh, i think dubai is a good example of that i mean it demonstrates there's plenty of countries around the world that haven't been as successful as and you know and hasn't done as much as what dubai has done um yes there's been many contributing factors but also the people, the leadership, that's also played a huge role in being able to make it. So I think people are everything. If you can understand that and if you can value people and working with people, encouraging people, motivating people, leading people, then I think that would be that would be one of so the So like networking, yeah. So like networking, networking is also important. People. Yeah, networking is also important. Social media. What yeah. about social media? Social media is the future. Yeah. <laughs> social media is the future. It's uh, it's changing the game. Yeah. Uh, in the majority of industries, you'll struggle to find an industry that will not benefit that from, hasn't got a yeah. from social media. There's a new, there's Threads app as well now. That's right. So that, there's a lot of new platforms. Yeah, yeah. And even it means even the old people like myself, we've, mm. we've got to get involved and we've got to be in there, to be honest, because uh, if you're not in it and you're you not on behind. it, you fall behind. And yeah, hence, yeah. The reason I'm, hence the reason I'm with you guys right now, <laughs> yeah. because I understand that. Even though even though I'm old, I kind of I kind of get that it's important to, uh, to be online. It's important to have a presence. And um, that's that's part of it. If you're not... If you're not on it, you're not in it. So, yeah. so, you, so yeah. you, you do do most of your marketing on social media, like because I've seen if you, you do a few reels and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing more and more and more. We're okay. doing more and more and more. Yeah, we're finding it to be uh, to be very very useful. We're finding it to uh, to better get the message out, uh, and it's it's very cost effective. It's a lot more cost mm. effective than, than the traditional methods of, mm. uh, of marketing. So yeah, social so, media is the future. So you don't use like TV ads? We haven't as of yet, but yeah. let's never say never. And yeah. let's also never say never for maybe not television ads, because um, I don't know if that's as targeted as we'd like to go. Yeah. But let's, I'm not saying that we wouldn't ever advertise on flights yeah. uh, when people are traveling into the country. Uh, I wouldn't. Idea. I wouldn't rule anything else out. So that's, a, that's still a television screen on the back of the seat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but not traditional. Traditional. traditional and I'm not sure if traditional television is, is the medium that we'd use. But listen, never say never. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is the most um, satisfying moment uh, as an entrepreneur? I mean, success is mm. uh, is is great. Whether you know whether you're selling a business, mm. uh, you know whether you're you know you're exiting a business. Mm. Um, but, but let me also say this: I've learned more through my failures. Than I have through my successes. So would you encourage people to like fail? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I wouldn't encourage people to fail. Of course, I'd never encourage people to. to, to <laughs> I was, I'm not saying one hundred percent encouraging people to, to fail. Yeah, yeah. He's laughing, but yeah. I'm encouraging people to try. 
That's right, but if yeah. you do fail, do not necessarily take that as a negative yeah. because there's a positive in that failing. Does that make sense? Well, don't yeah. give up. Yeah, don't give up. Don't way. give up. And even if you fail, get back up again, go again. So you know, don't... tweak it, change it, you know, yeah. move it, but go again. So don't get put down if you fail. Just keep trying. Keep trying. You learn more from the failures than you do from the successes, 100%. What is the future of investing? What is the future of investing? Yeah. I mean, there's many different there's many different ways of, of looking at that. There's many different ways of answering that. Um, let's talk properties. Let's talk properties. Yeah. Uh, I mean, listen, property has always been something that's, you know, if you know what you're doing, if you understand it very, very well, has been something that's been very, very lucrative for many people, right? Many people have done extremely well, you know, from property. Yeah. Um, so, so what the future? Um, I think the future is bright for this property. Is Airbnb. Um, Airbnb is one. Um, what we're also finding very, working very, very successfully for us is what we would call corporate uh, rentals, okay. um, which, is, which is like a corporate short term rental. We're finding that to be very, very good because you need less clients. Uh, the companies are paying for it. Uh, they pay up front for, for a month and it's a minimum of a monthly term. So you only need maximum of 12 tenants a year. So there's less wear and tear on the property because I do, many of the properties that I do, I do, I, I do it for myself as well. Oh. So I want to make, to make sure the properties are well looked after as well as I do for my clients to make sure that they're also. Yeah. Well, what do you think is more important, innovation or integrity? Integrity. Integrity. I mean, every single time. Yeah. Every single time, no question about it. That's a good question, though, by the way. Yeah. Uh, integrity is everything, right? If you can, if because because if people know that you've got integrity and that you work with integrity, then innovation can come, right? But if I, I wouldn't want to have innovation without integrity, you you need to have them both. But integrity is, is definitely key. So, have you had any examples where you um, use your integrity instead of innovation? Um, <laughs> to think of right now on the yeah. spot. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's lots actually. I mean, integrity. All the, you, you could have a property hmm. that you may well know uh, beforehand that there's something where there's you know whether there's a particular problem um, that may not be you know a major problem, yeah. but your integrity says this is something that I need to make sure I need to let the potential buyer know about the property. I think I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier hmm. when I said you know just be straight, be tr be transparent, and you know use your integrity. And people, even if you do not make the sale and the person goes off and buys somewhere else, you have not lost. You yeah. have still won. Because in order by the fact that you stuck with your integrity and you did what was right, yeah. for all you know, that person could then go to somebody else and say, listen, I didn't, you know, use Ainsley for X, Y, Z, yeah. but he's a guy that's got integrity. You're, look, you're looking for, for something and they could send you somebody else. Do you, are you with me? You might not get that particular client, yeah. but overall, I, I believe that you, you'll actually win. So how can someone from outside of Dubai come to Dubai and, you know, invest in like a property like this or like start up a business? They can contact me. I'll try. I'll try and help them as best I can. And if I can't help them, I'll definitely point them in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so, so I mean, more and more people are relocating to you know the United Arab Emirates and Dubai, especially hmm. uh, than they've ever moved here before. You know, I think in the last six months, over fifty thousand people from around the world uh, have relocated uh, to this part of the world. Yeah. Um, so, so th there are lots of people coming. There's lots of companies offering, you know, different ways to help people as well. Um, so, I, you know, if, you know, uh, do what makes you happy. You mm -hmm. know, if if um, 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 if somebody is, is sat watching this right now, uh, they're thinking to themselves, do you know what? You know, I'm fed up of the rain. I'm fed up of you know the UK weather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's cold. You know, <laughs> I'm working. You know, twelve hours, ten hours a day, or whatever it may well be, and I want to be able to do something different or live somewhere differently. Then you know, go look in the mirror, and the, the person that you see looking back at you is the person that can change all of that, uh, and that's what they have to do. And uh, that that was me. You yeah. know, one day, uh, many many a long time ago, I wanted to make that change, and and I, and I did, and now I'm here. In Dubai, speaking to you guys, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so I hope that can be an inspiration for at least one of your viewers that can that can kind of watch and see and say, do you know what? That that might be something that, that appeals to them. And if it's not, and they, you know, they're very happy living where they are in the UK, doing what they're doing, that's also good as well. Do yeah. what makes you feel happy, and if that makes you feel happy, then I think that's important. Yeah. What would you say is like the first steps to like, let's say, moving to Dubai? Like um, do your research. Yeah. Do your homework. You know, jump online, check it out. Make sure you understand all the costs. Make sure you you know you you know what you need to do, hmm. uh, and have that safety net there as well for yourself as well because that's important. Safety net as well. Yeah. Financial safety net. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not one for the helicopter. No, no, not one for the helicopter. Not one for the so helicopter. Do you offer any courses or like? Um, do you want people to join your team or is? No, no. To be honest, I'm not. I'm not really looking for anything from. Uh, I'm not looking. I don't offer courses. I'm not selling anything really yeah. at all. Hmm. Uh, I I just really want people to 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 be able to do the best that they can be able to do. Um, and and you know just fulfill fulfill their their full 
uh, potential really mm. themselves. So no, I'm not selling any courses and I'm no. not looking to be selling any courses. <laughs> yeah. If they do find a course that works for them and that, you know, that, that, that works well, uh, then or they find a mentor that works well for them as well. That, that's also really important. Yeah. What crypto? Are you just investing in, in crypto? I have dabbled yeah. in crypto. Uh, it's not something I'm really, really big in, uh, but I am, from what I'm understanding, I am hearing uh, that there's going to be another bull run. Um, that's Bitcoin. Be, yeah, that's going to be taking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. taking place uh, fairly soon. Yeah. Uh, and I'm keeping an eye, I'm keeping, keeping my ear to that, the ground yeah. on that one because I, uh, I know yeah. a lot of guys have done very, very well off that previously. So uh, yeah. and many of them are the, the same guys that are buying properties from me now, to be honest. So, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, Bitcoin. Do you take yeah. crypto? Oh uh, yeah, we are able to say crypto as well. Yeah. Crypto as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, going back to the previous question, so uh, we're talking about so let's say like, uh, like mentorship and the courses of that. Would you ever look into doing mentorship? Um, yes, I, I, I always like to, I never, I, I never immediately say no to anything, right? Mm. Because things can change, situations can change, you yeah. don't know. So, and I also like to have an open mind, right? Because I think that's also really important. So, um, uh, it's not something that I've done before uh, on, a, on a larger scale, mm. um, but it is something that, you know, I'd be open to, if it, but it would have to be the right person. It wouldn't be like a, a, a wide you know, yeah. uh, op open to anybody type thing. It'd have to be somebody that I understand. But more importantly, it'd have to be somebody that I can see that genuinely wants it yeah. uh, and is prepared to put the work in. What I've seen a lot of, and I think we will probably all have, is lots of people that say that they want it, yeah. but they're not actually prepared to put the work in. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in working with those types of people at all. So how would you find out that this person's... You can tell, you can tell. tell yeah. You can tell, you, you can tell. I've, I've, I've been around the block, so you can yeah. see somebody that genuinely wants to do something and someone that's playing lip service and not really prepared to do anything about it at all. Yeah. So you wouldn't put courses online or like mentorship online? It would be more like one-to-one? -one. Yeah, 100%. That's yeah. exactly, yeah, you, you summed it up correctly. You, you put it more eloquently than I did. Yeah, one-to-one -one is definitely what I'd be more interested in if it was something that I did. Yeah. rather than doing a course and like I'm not really interested in uh, in doing courses or that kind of thing for myself my, my yeah. time's pretty you know pretty wrapped up at the moment yeah. and I also I feel it's important that I can as much as that kind of thing I can do myself and my daughter yeah. and I can work with work with her and I think I owe it to her to make sure yeah. that I can build her up as good as I can you know before I start working with other people definitely I think family is important yeah, yeah. I've, got to, I've, got to, I've got to do that for myself really what's the future plans now for you like off market listing Future plans, um, really, it's kind of, you know, uh, looking after the clients that we have yeah, yeah. Is, is a priority. Uh, if you'd asked me that same question, you know, five or 10 years ago, I probably would have <laughs> said, grow it bigger, you know, take on another country. And, and you know, but but now I, that's 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 not the way I look at things. I think uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking at quality over quantity. Uh, so I'm not looking over, you know, bear in mind, I've opened offices in many, many different countries. I've traveled quite a little, quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm more than happy just to kind of work. Do you know what, the, the future? Working with great people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Your main aim is Dubai now, yeah? My main aim is the UAE. My yeah, main yeah, aim yeah. is working um, working with great people. I like, I love yeah. meeting people. I love meeting great people mm. uh, and being able to add value uh, to those people as well. Would you say that's important, like adding value and stuff like that? Adding value is really, really important, but also learning. You're mm. always learning. Every day I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning from you guys. Uh, you guys, you guys help, uh, and also you know, learning from 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 from. from you, you, very rarely you find somebody that you meet that there's not something that you can learn from them, right? So it's always just been open to that to try and learn as much as you can. People have Definitely. like a portfolio, like 10, 20, 100 properties. Are you? Have you got a portfolio as well of properties? So, so I do, but I don't have a hundred properties. I have yeah. a much smaller portfolio than that. Um, but I have clients that have that have you know very large property yeah, uh, portfolios. Yeah. Also, you have to remember it's not necessarily how many properties that you have because sometimes the value you know if you have yeah, if you billion, have billions. You can, yeah you can have you can have you know three or four properties that could be worth over a hundred million dollars right yeah. um, so it's not necessarily how many properties you have um, but you know but it, it all depends as to what you want as well right yeah. some people just want to have just a handful. Uh, easier to maintain and to manage and some people want to you know build up yeah. bigger big empires well I guess it's more easier if you've got like um, a few properties but are worth high rather than having like many but are worth low in value exactly so it must be uh, a lot easier so um, based off that what would your philosophy be towards like money I think saving is really important yeah I think saving is really important it's not something that I've been the best at yeah. myself personally just being honest with you um, but um, but it is something that I that I would advise to others to practice and to work on and to get better at get better with because with capital you're mm. able to do a lot more things than you than 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 um than you can if you don't have the capital mm. so we that would be something that I'd, I'd kind of say in regards to money um but also um investing 
the fastest investing. way to make money from 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 my learnings is by investing. Investing, yeah, yeah investing. That, yeah. That, that's that that's that's a, that's a really good way to be able to get you, rapid you, uh, capital growth. Yeah, would you say investing more than saving, or would you say a bit of both? No, no, I'd say investing. I'd say, I'd say but yeah. in order to invest, you need to have the money initially, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's why, I start, that's why you need to have the capital, right? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't invest if, you don't, if, you don't, if you're starting, from, if you're starting from, the, from, from, from ground zero. So yeah. that's why I said, first of all, the saving, in order to be able to get yourself a little bit of a nest egg. Mm. Once you've then been able to do that, then you'll be able to do your homework and do your research, find where you would be the best place for you based on where you are, based on where you live, based on what you understand, for you to invest that money, and then rinse and repeat. Keep doing that and then, and then grow from there. What, yeah. what do you invest in? What's your main investment? Well, I, I love property. Property. I'm yeah, really keen on property. Well, like I, villas or apartments. I, I I I understand property because obviously you know I've been in, in Dubai a little bit uh, a little amount of time now. Yeah. Um, so um, I like villas. I also like apartments. Different properties for different things. Yeah. Um, but I I'm I'm very I'm very bullish on the on the market uh, in terms of over the next ten years for property in Dubai. So I, I I'm I'm all in on that for, for, yeah, for right yeah. now. Which area have you most sold? properties in Dubai? Uh, Palm Jumeirah, Palm Dubai Jumeirah. Marina. Would you say that's more famous, like Palm Jumeirah? Yeah? The Palm Jumeirah is, is, is iconic. It's got nice yeah. views, it's, it's beach. Correct. Would you say that's the most popular in Dubai? No, no. I'd say there's, there's many different areas in Dubai and for many, yeah. different, different, many different reasons. You know, yeah. some people love downtown, the views yeah. of the Burj uh, Khalifa. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, but there's lots of different areas in Dubai. Dep- depending on your lifestyle, depending if, you know, if you're, if you're a bachelor, if you've got yeah. a family, yeah. you know, you may well want a villa, you may want an apartment. So yeah. I, there's not one thing fits all. What would you say is the most like, expensive area? Um, two areas that immediately spring to, right, spring to mind is called an area called Al Barari. Okay. Uh, which is one of the greenest areas in Dubai. Where's that? Which um, that? Yeah, that's a little bit further out of Dubai. It's from the main city. It's oh, like, right. a, you know, 15, 15 20 minutes uh, outside the main city. Uh, but it's a very, very green area. Uh, and there's another area called Emirates Hills. Oh, yeah, uh, which is kind of like you heard it's of like that, 40 right? million yeah. pound, 40 million dirhams yeah yeah it's almost like the like the Beverly Hills of uh, <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of Dubai and there's so. new one Blue Lagoon Damak Hills that's right they're, 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 I mean they're, there's lots of different developments the, the lagoons I think there's Jebel Ali now as well the new palm that, that's the second that, yeah that's right um, yeah. that's going to be incredible that's going to be like you know three three times the, the size of the current uh, palm three four times the size of the current palm Jumeirah that we have right now yeah are you so, looking to invest in that as well yeah that's going to be that's going to be a, that's going to be something definitely that's going to be very very interesting yeah it's going to have the, a lot of uh, beachfront um, and it's going to be a hot, it's going to be a hot area. It's been nice talking with you, Ainsley. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of knowledge to be learned definitely uh, for the viewers as well. And I've learned a lot as well. Uh, so the last question of the podcast is, does money buy you happiness? Uh, does money buy you happiness? No, money does not buy you happiness. Uh, but it can make things a hell of a lot more comfortable if you're able to have money. Um, because there's many people that may not have money, but if you have, if you have your health, um, in fact, one of the most important things is health. Yeah, you can ask every single you know millionaire, billionaire that you go and meet, and if you ask him, you know, what's more important, money or health, yeah. and every single one of them will tell you that health is more important every single time. Health is your wealth. Yeah. Health, health is definitely your wealth because yeah. you know if you have money but without health, yeah. you can't do anything, you right? Can't spend it. You can't you even can't, spend it. So yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, you so, so 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 health is definitely significantly more and more important. Yeah. Um, and you know, you can't buy health. You know, mm. you can't buy health no matter what you do. So yeah. I would say health is really is, is the most important. Um, but money, once you once you have your health, uh, yeah. and then you're able then to be able to you know, you know add some money to that. It can make life a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time and everything. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Cheers, guys. Thank I appreciate. You, I appreciate. I appreciate. Yeah. No appreciate. problem. All right. Thank you guys for listening. If you want to learn more about cash flow and businesses, make sure you subscribe. We we'll catch you in the next one.